next presenter is homegrown in Trinidad. Uh, it's, the presentation is on technology trends in digital financial services. And to give us that presentation, we have Mr. Ian John, who is a director of system solutions at Massey Technologies Infocom Limited Trinidad, the Caribbean's leading provider of ICT solutions and services. John has over 20 years managerial exp experience in the ICT sector. He now leads a team of highly trained professionals in the financial and retail payment systems arena and is currently pioneering a number of initiatives which will further advance the industry. I'm hoping so um, I just wanted to share with you uh, as part of the Massey group of companies. Uh, many of you may not be aware, but Massey Technologies, which operate in uh, pretty much most of the English-speaking Caribbean, uh, we've been operating in the financial uh, retail space for many a decades. And if you've ever used an ATM, uh, Jamaica, Barbados, St. Vincent, uh, you've interacted with uh, Massey Technologies. Um, if you've ever been to a supermarket, in any one of the islands, uh, the payment systems, the retail systems that those supermarkets are actually implemented by Marcy Technologies. And um, a lot of the presentations that I've been able to, to listen to this morning has been very interesting. Um, I, I think uh, that's why I started with this slide. I've noticed that these cars are moving very rapid. They're moving at high speed, uh, not 80 kilometers per hour, um, but, but, but nauseating speed. And uh, I think the key thing for us uh, in this room is to understand that, that speed is very important and that it's a reality that innovation uh, and technology does not happen at the speed of legislation. Uh, neither does it happen at the speed of uh, regulations and policies, etc. It happens uh, when it happens very, very quickly. And so what we're finding is that technologies are very disruptive uh, and, and have been affecting industries in major, major ways, uh, particularly in the financial transaction space. Um, there are a host of uh, technologies that are available worldwide. Um, many of you are familiar with, uh, you're familiar with Uber. Uh, you must have heard of Uber, right? Uber, the largest taxi company in the world, but they do not own one taxi. Uh, Airbnb, uh, which is the largest hotel group in the world, but they do not own not one piece of real estate. Uh, and, and, and these are organizations that are multi-billion organizations, and they did not exist five years ago. Um, that's the reality that we are faced with. Um, that's the reality that we are faced with as legislators, as uh, policy makers. Uh, and we have to recognize that things happen very, very quickly in the real world. One of the most stunning facts that we have come to terms with within the Massey Group uh, is the fact that 52% of Fortune 500 companies, uh, from 2000 to now, 52% of them no longer exist, in that they've been wiped out either by acquisition, either by mergers, or just plain technology made them irrelevant. And it's affecting industries, it's affecting governments, it's affecting policymakers, it's affecting the banking industry, it's affecting the retail industry. Uh, it's affecting lives. And, and that's the reality of it. So speed is something that we, 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 we pay particular attention to. Um, and I know we're talking about innovation in, in uh, innovation in financial transactions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I don't know how many of you have heard of Mavericks. Mavericks are these... Uh, guys who go out and they surf uh, the waves. These are huge waves and they happen, uh, they can happen anywhere in the globe. Uh, these waves range between 30 and 60 feet. And just for the thrill of it, 
they, they, they go out and they, they take advantage of the trill. Uh, but they have 48 hours to get there because the person who's actually monitoring a lot of what is taking place uh, with the weather, etc., uh, only has 48 hours to say that Mavericks will appear in Maracas Bay. And it, it did happen some years ago here in Trinidad where Trinidadians were on the beach having a good time and there were waves that were huge. And they realized that there were guys who came into the country, knew about the waves, but the Trinidadians didn't know about the waves. Um, this is what happens in the space of the financial sector and the business sector. And sometimes to us policymakers and regulators where changes happen and we're not even aware that the change has happened. And it's already in affecting the industry that we're operating. Um, and we're grappling to, to, to deal with the reality of that impact. And that's why I started by saying that uh, innovation does not happen at the speed of regulation or at the speed of legislation. Um, otherwise, God knows where we would have been. Um, suffice it to say that uh, a lot of this talks about the speed of innovation, and I wouldn't bore you with that because it talks about you know a lot of the technological changes that are taking place worldwide in the financial space. Uh, but when we talk about that wave, this is a wave we talk about. It's the high curve. And I just want to say, as, as policymakers, uh, we should be spending some time looking at this curve. This is an indication of where the next possible impact uh, in our industry is likely to occur. And uh, if we have an understanding of where that impact is likely to come from, it means that we can be proactive in coming up with policies and legislations. This is actually the curve that the Massey Group and Massey Technologies Infocom, we spend a lot of time investing and researching and seeing where we should be investing monies and resources to ensure that our organization stays relevant uh, in society. And another area which is tied to the, the, the curve is a, another study that you should look at when looking at setting policies or looking at possible impact of technologies, uh, emerging technologies on your businesses, on your economies, uh, basically tells you that there are some huge, huge economical impact that will come to, to, to the business environment. Uh, when you look at the area of cloud computing, for instance, Internet of Things or automation, knowledge automation actually is huge. And when, when we talk about knowledge automation, we're actually talking about the financial sector, the retail transaction sector, because that's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to have some huge impact there. So some of the things that we have been working on, uh, I mentioned to you that if you've used an ATM in the Caribbean, you've used uh, an ATM that has been implemented and supported by Massey. A lot of the back-end stuff is uh, implemented by Massey. If you've used a point of sale, for those of you who are from Jamaica, um, you might be familiar with CRIF. CRIF is a credit bureau that looks at the credit ratings of uh, individuals. Um, in Barbados, we implemented the ACH, which is the Automated Clearing House. Uh, we have an electronic bill payment system. Many of you would be familiar with Shopee. Uh, it's available in Barbados and Trinidad and Tobago. Um, so, so we are very much involved in, in this space. And um, you know, I was saying to, to Shiva a short while ago, as much as I can share with you without releasing uh, confidential information, um, you know, I would try to. So what is, what is coming is there's a wave of change that are coming, what we foresee uh, that are taking place on the horizon. And it has to do with uh, the unbanked persons having access to electronic payment systems. Um, we see a wave of different payment systems. How many of you are familiar with Apple Pay? Um, so where you're actually making payments with your phones. I actually use Apple Pay when I travel abroad. Um, a lot of the card systems, the Amazon cards, you know, you can actually use cash to purchase the Amazon cards or the eBay cards. And what you're doing is you're actually bypassing a banking system because you now have the ability to make electronic transactions online. 
by using a card which was released by the merchants or issued by the merchants. So you have to look at how do you capture or how do you ensure that you understand that, 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 that this is happening and how is it impacting uh, business or how can it enhance business or how is it taken away from, from the business. As we realized in Trinidad, the, the Minister of Finance in the last budget update spoke about 7% uh, on online taxes, on online purchases. Um, and that is really trying to capture some of the activities that is being that is happening online. Um, it's capturing some, but it's not capturing all. Okay, so you really have to understand what systems exist out there and what systems uh, are used to bypass the the the, the current like, regulations and legislations that we may have in place. And I assure you, there are quite a bit of those uh, that exist right now. Um, if you've used the Air EMB, for instance, app, as I mentioned to you, you'd realize that uh, I was in Tobago this week and there were a lot of foreigners up in Castara and uh, up in the countryside and they didn't book using a travel agent. They actually booked a little house using Airbnb and they came all the way from Switzerland. Okay, so you have to understand the implications of what that means. It is... A, on one hand, huge opportunities uh, levels the playing field, but on the other hand, it also poses a threat uh, to, to systems that we may have in place. So again, a full analysis is, is required. What, it, what we are actually doing, uh, you know, we, we do provide uh, a number of consulting with small, medium size, as well as large business, looking at the impact that the technology can have on the business. And as much as possible, we also do provide some level of thought leadership to uh, government agencies as well, in terms of helping them look at legislation that might be able to assist in, in regulating uh, transactions in the industry. Um, that is much as I can say on that side. On the Massey side, we have some very exciting things that are happening. Um, what I could share with you, uh, if you've ever used a self-checkout, um, if you travel abroad and you've gone to a Home Depot or Walmart and you found that the line was long at the cashier, um, so you use the ch self-checkout machines, we actually are in the midst of uh, developing the templates and uh, the processes to implement self-checkout in Trinidad. Um, it will be the first in the English-speaking uh, Caribbean outside of the U.S. Um, I don't want to give you a timeline yet, but we've actually started the work and the units are actually uh, arriving in country this month uh, for that to, to, to take place. So that's a little bit of excitement there because what that means is you can literally go to that self-checkout and possibly use your card or use cash and pay for your utility bills as well without having to interact with uh, that cashier, so to speak. It means also that you can use that self-checkout machine to pay for certain government services as well. Uh, so really and truly what we've done is we've opened up another channel that will give some uh, flexibility uh, to individuals. And I, I know many of you are from uh, other islands, uh, we'd be happy to have a chat with you and see what opportunities exist in the islands as well. Um, anybody from Jamaica? Anyone from Jamaica? No one from Jamaica. Okay, so in Jamaica, uh, on the ATM side, we've actually implemented what we call intelligent ATMs, which is to say uh, when you go to an ATM right now and you make a deposit, for instance, you actually would have to put that deposit in an envelope and the machine receives the envelope. Well, in, in the intelligent ATM, if I have a stack of cash and I may have some checks included in there, I don't have to really prepare it. I can just slot it into the machine and the machine will intelligently recognize the denominations. It would recognize the check. Uh, it would also look for all of the security codes in the, in the currency and it will automatically accept those that are legitimate and it would spit out the ones that are maybe fraudulent. Um, and it would 
it can accept, the ability is it can accept and that deposit can be made directly into your account. So whereas before you would have had to wait several days for the clearing and then the, you know, authentication, etc. Now the ability is to receive that check, cash together, and those payments can go straight into your account. So it can facilitate faster trade in that instance. That's step one. Step two, where we are right now, is actually, um, we are actually, the first unit is coming into Trinidad and we have several units in Jamaica. I don't know if you all are familiar with Interactive Teller. Now this one holds a lot of opportunity for even the islands, uh, the small islands, and different types of business interests. The Interactive Teller really is an automated teller that provides you with an interface to have a live video conversation with a banking teller. So I can have full banking services in a remote part of the island. So the folks in Toko, for instance, uh, Matura, you know, within that community center, within that government services center, they can actually go to an interactive teller and uh, they can speak to an official of the bank. They can actually conduct a transaction. So, you know, they go to the teller and they say, hi, um, I'd like to make a deposit. And the person will say, okay, uh, you know, open the drawer, put your money in. So they take full control over the ATM and they're providing that level of security and that level of warmth, particularly when we deal with some of the elderly people who are very apprehensive to the ATM. Well, all they need to do is sit in front of the ATM and talk to the automatic teller and tell them what they would like uh, to be done. That person, by the way, can be anywhere remotely. They can be in India, they can be in Africa, they can be anywhere in the world because you're using the, 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 the internet services to be able to communicate in real time. Um, that technology will also be used for bill payments. So it is likely that you will see an interactive teller where you can go in and sit and say, I would like to pay my utilities bill. I would like to pay my water bill. I would like to pay my electricity bill. And I'd also like to make a deposit into my account. Um, and uh, by the way, I think my driver's permit is expiring. So I would like to pay for my driver's permit renewals as well. Okay, so there's a host of opportunities that, that will uh, open up with, with those types of technologies. Um, and we are hoping within the next year or two uh, that we can actually start innovating a number of new services on top of those technologies, right? Um, much more time do I have, Madam Chairperson? None? <laughs> See, at the speed of... Well, actually, um, you started at 11.15. Okay. Into the question. Right, so you can interrupt me anytime. So uh, it's just to say that uh, there's a host of technology out there that can really enhance the lives of our citizens. And uh, some of them are being held back because of the lack of uh, legislation and regulations, etc. cetera. Um, some of them because of lack of knowledge. I'll give you an example. Uh, we launched three years ago, something called NCR Silver. And what was NCR Silver? NCR Silver was a point of sale system running on the Apple uh, iPad. And it just sat on top of a cash register. It meant that you didn't have to buy a point of sale application. It meant that you didn't have to pay someone to support it because on that Apple, you needed everything you needed, inventory, point of sale, payment system, payment gateway, everything existed. Thing about it was everything was cloud-based. And people really love the system. They really love the system. But when we got down to the nitty-gritty and they started to get down and they really started to ask their questions, they love everything. And they said to us, many of them said to us, um, so let me ask you something. So will I be able to go in and change what my profit is and what my losses are, et cetera, et cetera. And it took us about five minutes to figure out what they were really asking. So I no, this is a cloud-based system. So, and remember it's used as a point of sale system where in the countries that it originated, taxation is embedded in the system. So for instance, sales tax come off of the system and go straight into an account to be paid by the state 
in that jurisdiction. And he said, wait a minute, so I can't go in and say that I made a loss here and I didn't make a profit here. And the reality was what they were trying to say is that they said, this is beautiful, but we don't want this because this will not work for us. Why would it not work for you? Because they wanted to run parallel books. They wanted to be able to say, we lost money, so we don't have taxes to pay, right? And so you have to understand how legislation plays a role in, in allowing and advancing the technology and the uses of the technology. So long as we have those loopholes, you know, we are going to stay in a state where many people would choose to be unbanked because of, of the benefits of being unbanked. I don't have to pay taxes. I don't have to worry about that. Especially now where they can buy an Amazon card or they can buy an eBay card and they can make their purchases and shop online like everybody else. All right? So that's where the legislation comes into play. So where we sit, there's a lot of technology that are available that can really make life beneficial to everyone. Uh, payment systems for bus tickets, payment systems for taxis. Uh, we can put payment systems right now in maxi taxis. That will mean that you just swipe and you but they wouldn't want to implement it because obviously because of taxes and the issues around payment and fiduciary, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So this is as much as I could share with you. I'm willing to uh, answer any questions or share anything if anyone has anything specific uh, at this point in time. I guess I'm off the hook. <laughs> yes. You sure we have no questions? Good morning. My name is Marcel Asconson. So I'm from St. Vincent and the Grandins. Now, yesterday we heard from some entrepreneurs who highlighted there were issues in terms of receiving ele electronic payments. Um, I heard you mention show pay. I don't know if that solution would be able to work for them because they, they said that they try to use like services like PayPal, but you can't have payments come to... Um, countries outside of the US. So I want to know if you have any solutions in place that can accept um, electronic payments in our area. Okay, so um, what you're asking me to be clear is that if I'm providing a service on a, an app or on the internet, um, I want to be able to receive payments via credit card or debit card as the case may be. Um, and that's in the locale of uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, that type of system, if the service is, 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 if the service is strictly for St. Vincent, um, there are ways that they can work with a local bank to, to get that system going, right? But they would have to work with one of the local banks, yeah? Unless they are looking to receive payments internationally and they, they set up with one of the international clearing houses, uh, but there are restrictions with regards to doing that, right? It means that they would have to have an account with a bank in that jurisdiction in the US. So what we recommend, because we do have examples of uh, receiving online payments in Trinidad, and we recommend that you work with one of the local banks. Um, if there isn't a bank in St. Vincent, um, then certainly that's a service that we'd be willing to have a conversation with the bank with regards to how they develop, uh, put the mechanisms in place to be able to activate such a systems and a service in, in St. Vincent. Yeah. Let me just highlight that. This is the, actually the situation in most of the ACS countries. We have the issue where the banks do not want to accept the PayPal payments. And if they do, you get your money in 30 days. And 30 days, small business will is absolute suicide. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But what it, what it is, is that, as I mentioned, um, and maybe we can have a conversation and we can uh, probably introduce you to some of the folks in locally here as well who've actually implemented the system. We actually have a local bank that has an e-commerce engine that allows payments to be made online in Trinidad uh, using a local card, debit or credit card, right? But it requires some investment in, 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 in some technology. And um, I think they might be looking at and saying the size of the, 
the, the, the market may not warrant the cost of the investment. But there are ways around that. Yeah. So I, I don't know if anyone, everyone is excited about the self-checkout. I mean, would you not like to, yeah, self-checkout and uh, interactive teller, you know, think there's a lot of opportunities. Uh, and these are just additional channels that uh, will provide you with an option, right? We still have a long way to go with online um, services. Uh, we still have a long way to go. I was in Tobago yesterday and flight was delayed for six hours and um, because of the rain. And there was no way of knowing when my flight would would be available. I walked up to the counter and they said, you'll have to come back. You just have to keep coming back. So there were several hundreds of people at one time just coming back to find out when their flight was happening. Um, it was unnecessary. And then I pulled out my phone and I showed my wife. She said, what are you going to do? I pulled out my phone and I showed my wife. I said, look at this. I know every flight on every plane, on every airport in the world. So we just went to a restaurant and sat down and looked at the airport in chaos. But I knew when a plane was going to take off, when it took off, what time it was going to land. And I was just looking at the airport's authority, just not knowing what was going on. But I knew what was going on. Right. And on the same app, I actually had an app and I could show you for air traffic controller in all the air traffic controllers in the world. So I can actually hear the conversation. What the weather was like in Trinidad. I knew the problem was weather. I knew the problem was, but all of that was available on my phone. And this, this is my presence for being here this morning. It's just to say to you that a lot of things are happening and the decision makers are not aware that they're happening. You know, we are in a world, it's, a, it's just our world and we create that little world. But in reality, there's so much that is happening outside of it. And it was just eking me to walk up to one of the airport's authority people and say, hey, I know exactly when this woman flight will leave, when that person flight will leave, when, because I'm seeing all of it on the international system, by the way. So there's a lot about what is happening in Trinidad and Tobago, St. Vincent, Grenada, Barbados, that we don't know is happening, but the world knows is happening. And that's the part about it that is very concerning for me. Thank you. Uh, we have um, just just a comment from um, uh, somebody online. Um, um, Thea Smith, the Deputy Director on Communications, Ministry of Transport, Communication and Tourism in Suriname. And she just has a comment to say that it's an interesting development, especially for countries like Suriname where we have the interior. We will share this uh, with the providers in the banking sector. So thank you very much for that. Welcome. Thank you, Ian.